Welcome to The Red Path. My name is Dara, and today we are going to be concluding our three-part mini-series on your first Warhammer 40,000 tournament. This video is going to be all about the post-tournament come down, analyzing your results and planning for the future. If you are brand new to the tournament scene, this is the video for you, so grab yourselves a brew and let's dive in. Attending your first Warhammer 40,000 tournament can be a daunting prospect and this mini-series is designed to help you overcome some of the challenges you might face. In part 1 and 2 we talked about preparing for your first tournament and what it's like to actually attend the event so if you haven't already checked those out I strongly recommend watching those before diving into this. Today though we are going to be talking about the days after a tournament, how to deal with the post-tournament come down or post-tournament blues as a lot of people refer to it, processing those emotions and analyzing your results in a way which can be productive and helpful. It's a little bit of a complicated video, we're diving into aspects that a lot of people don't normally talk about, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get into it. So whether you've won every game and conquered the entire tournament hall, or you've been slammed to the bottom tables and you left with a wooden spoon, the days after a Warhammer tournament can be a little bit tough. Your body is dealing with the inevitable physical fallout of standing by a gaming table for many hours coupled with the mental exhaustion that comes with playing multiple games of Warhammer over the course of a day or two. You are probably also facing into a week of work or school, a return to normality, which can definitely be draining. As if that wasn't enough, you then have to process the emotions associated with your tournament result. Are you happy? Are you disappointed? Where do you go from here? How do you improve or maintain success? Can there possibly be anything in the world which can fill this empty void within? It is an aspect of Warhammer tournaments that people don't normally discuss, but one that definitely deserves some attention, and that's what I'll be focusing on today. I'm going to kick things off by running through the more tangible aspects of the post-tournament analysis, reflecting on your games and how to use them as a step towards improving your performance. Then we will work through dealing with the emotions you may experience following an event and how best to process them. Finally, I'll touch on channeling all this to planning your future projects, be it another tournament or getting back to the painting desk. It is going to be a little bit more abstract than part 1 and 2, but it's all advice that I wish I'd had before I began playing Warhammer tournaments. So let's jump straight into analysing your results. When discussing a tournament result, people will often use terminology like 5032-1405. Think of this like a KD ratio from a video game. It essentially means how many games you won and lost. If I went 3 and 2, that means I won 3 games and lost 2. After a tournament is wrapped up, this result is usually the first thing people will talk about and think about, and it tends to contribute massively to the feelings you'll have about an event that you've attended and the emotions you experience in the following days. While you shouldn't let your final results decide your opinion of a Warhammer 40,000 tournament, it can be difficult to detach this number from your sense of self-worth and overall experience. Regardless of how many events you've attended, or if this is your very first tournament, you probably went into it with an expectation of the result that you would like. I touched on this in part 1, and how if you've never been to an event before, a solid goal is to aim for one win. From my own personal experience and observations I've made over the course of countless events, people tend to overestimate their skill and set an expectation for themselves which can be unrealistic. Failing to achieve this then results in disappointment and it can also warp your perception of the event so it's important to be realistic with yourselves when initially settling on a goal. When it comes to analysing your performance then, the first thing you should ask yourself is, did you meet your goal for the event? Your goal, of course, doesn't have to be focused on how many wins and losses you achieve. Goals can include winning the best painted army, or the most sporting general, or best overall. It can be as simple as getting to play a, game, a bunch of 40k games, or making some new friends. Goals are personal, and in order to set them, you need to ask yourself what you want to get out of a tournament. In the days after, you can return to this question, asking yourself if you achieved what you wanted. If not, it's important to try and find out why. Sometimes this can be due to factors which are out of your control, but an unrealistic goal from the beginning can also be the culprit in this case. Answering this question is easy when your goal is orientated around wins and losses, but pinpointing where a game was lost can actually be somewhat tricky. 
I often see people default to blaming the dice for, for this, and it's not really a good idea. It won't allow scope for skill growth. And dice, while they're certainly a variable which can go against you in a game of 40k, their variance can definitely be minimized by good decision making. Ultimately, an ability to recognize these decisions and where you have gone wrong is a vital skill to have in this post-tournament analysis. It requires a certain amount of emotional and personal detachment from the games and critical reflection. It isn't easy, you're obviously going to be invested in those games and it's natural to look for ways other than blaming yourself for a loss. These though are my top tips when it comes to analyzing your tournament games. So take pictures at the start and end of every battle round during your games. Review these images and share them with competitively minded friends. Look at the game state and try to work out if you were making a push too early or a play which was not the most optimal decision. Track your games on the Tabletop Battles app and review how and when you scored. You'll be able to see turns where you dropped points and you can combine this with the table images and you'll be able to work out swing moments in a game. You should also revisit key decisions that you made during a game. Was there a play which you expected to go better or worse than it actually did? Why did that happen? How impactful was it on the overall game state? Did you possibly commit too much or too little to a certain aspect of the game? Did you make a play which won you the game? Going to a tournament with the intention of doing well in the painting competition is an equally valid goal. In fact, it's actually the main prize that I push for at tournaments these days. Painting competitions at these tournaments can vary greatly in terms of how they are run and judged, and what categories are available, as well as the overall level of competition. Whether you won or lost, there's always something to take away from these competitions. Just like the games you played, make sure you take pictures of other people's entries and armies. You can review these afterwards, paying particular attention to things you liked about certain entries. If you've got pictures of the winners, have a look at their composition. Try and work out where they might have won. Have they brought something to the table that you didn't? When I see another Grimdark army on the board, I take tons of pictures of it, because you never know where you'll find inspiration for a new technique. Tournaments, they're an excellent opportunity to hunt for this inspiration, so be sure to take the time to walk the hall and look at other armies. During the post-event phase, write down a list of things which impressed you about other people's armies. Work out if there's anything you can add to your own repertoire to improve your painting. If you had the chance to talk to any of the other painters and note down their advice and suggestions, then compile all this information and condense it into something you can make use of. Reflecting on the success and failures of a tournament run are part and parcel of the post-tournament vibes. I've always found that a clinical, detached approach to my performance yields the best results for me, but the same won't be true for everyone. It's a great opportunity to dissect what happened while the memories are still fresh in your mind. Being critical but fair of your performance will allow you to develop as a player and home in on the aspects of the hobby that you need to improve. Just remember, don't be too hard on yourself either. If this is your first event, it is completely fine to lose every single game. Don't be disheartened. Use it as a stepping stone on your journey in competitive play. There is an aspect of the post-tournament come down that is a little harder to quantify, discuss and advise on. Collectively, we call this the post-tournament blues and it represents the emotions that you might be feeling in the days after a tournament. It's completely normal to experience the blues after an event, even if you've done really well and achieved your event goals. As always, talking about these feelings can be a great way of getting past them, and you should never let them eat you up from the inside. Looking after your mental health is vital across all facets of life, and having a good group of friends to turn to in the days after an event can be really helpful. Of course, you can always join our Discord community and regale us with tales of battle and conquest. People tend to be pretty excited to hear about tournaments in there, and it can be a good way of getting past the post-tournament blues if you don't have an immediate friend group to talk to. One of the ways that you can overcome these emotions is by implementing the clinical analysis that I've already spoken about. It can be a good distraction, inevitably leading to new list scheming, discussions, and ideas about what comes next. Of course, though, it's not always that simple. Disappointment is one of the most common feelings someone will experience after an event, and it can be hard to get past. In many cases, it can actually lead to someone not attending another tournament in the future. This, coupled with the exhaustion and physical come down of a tournament, can brood together in your mind, creating a rough concoction of thoughts and bad energy. 
everyone will deal with this a little bit differently, but it is totally understandable to be in this state after such an intense weekend. Personally, the way I get over this is by hard resetting my brain. There's a few ways I do this. Take a week or so away from 40k. I like to play D&D, do some reading, play some video games, or do some art. Sometimes I like to start a fresh hobby project, something that doesn't have a time constraint and will be enjoyable. I also like to scheme with my friends about new list ideas. Implementing the lessons I learned from the event, it's often a great source of inspiration for new playstyle ideas. Also, start planning your next tournament. Did you catch the event bug? Seeking out the next possible event is a great way to generate fresh hype and banish the blues. Or hang out with some friends, family, or your partner. Maybe book in a casual game of 40k, a board game night, or just watch some movies. You've probably been pent up with tournament hype, so do something that is relaxing and de-stressing. The reality of the situation is that I usually do a mix of these things to get past the event blues. Ultimately, I always feel a little bit rough after a tournament, no matter what, but by taking the time to reset my brain, I can get past the bad vibes and move on to something fun and fresh. Personally, I believe that having a strong friend group or community is one of the most important ways of getting past this, so reach out to some folks for a chat if you're feeling rough. If you are brand new to the tournament scene, there can be a lot of overwhelming feelings and emotions which you might be surprised to actually experience. Most commonly, I see tournament newcomers being really disappointed with their performance. And while I understand that no one likes losing, your first tournament is always going to be the hardest one and you should treat it as a learning experience. Tournaments encompass a wide range of 40k players, from completely fresh on the scene gamers to veterans who've been playing for decades. You don't have to be the best. You don't even have to be good. The most important thing is remembering that this is a hobby which we are all doing for fun and stress relief. So don't let it be a negative influence in your life. By processing the post-tournament blues and converting them into something productive and positive, you are a lot more likely to enjoy the overall tournament experience and want to get stuck into more. However, there is also nothing wrong with not having fun at an event. It is totally possible that competitive events just aren't your thing. Don't feel like you need to force yourself into more to get enjoyment out of the hobby, and don't let anyone belittle you for this either. We're all drawn to Warhammer for different reasons, and there's tons of ways to enjoy 40k other than the competitive scene. I feel like this video might have been just a little bit rambly, but it's kind of difficult to discuss and quantify the post-tournament blues. Even though I've been to countless events, across multiple different countries, more than I can even count at this point, I still suffer from the post-tournament blues after pretty much every single event. Now I'm very lucky, I've got a great group of friends and a wonderful partner who support me and understand how I feel after these things, but it's not always so simple for everyone. We have a wonderful Discord community in the Red Path, and those people are always willing to have a chat. So if you're struggling to find that group to kind of bring you up after an event, reach out. You know, there's going to be people there who are willing to help. Personally, I think the most important thing though is to work out what your best method is for processing emotions, be it creativity, list scheming, whatever way you get through it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But the main thing that I want to highlight is that it is totally normal to experience this funk. Don't let your wins and losses take away from your enjoyment of the game and treat every event as a step on the ladder. Sometimes we take a step down before we have to go back up again. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and remember we are all here to have fun at the end of the day. That does pretty much wrap up my thoughts on the video though and also for this Getting Started mini-series. I hope you have enjoyed it um, and if you're new on the scene I hope it's been useful as well. I'd love to hear about any of you who've taken the plunge into events after watching these videos, so be sure to comment down below and let me know. If you have found it helpful, there's a ton of ways you can show support, mainly by sharing the video, liking, commenting, subscribing, all the usual stuff. If there are other getting started videos that you would like to see on the channel, then let me know. I will be more than happy to make them. If you want to improve your competitive or painting game as well, we have several Patreon plans which offer some premium channels in our Discord for like-minded individuals, and it helps keep the red path afloat. For now though, that is all from me. I have been Dara, and you have been watching The Red Path. This has been our Getting Started with Warhammer Tournaments mini-series. Until the next one, folks, stay healthy, stay safe, and kill, maim, burn.